Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Tuesday the 20th of June. You're welcome to join me in the building or by Zoom, code on the Bride Church's website and Facebook page. And I'm recording audio to upload onto my Dominic Doble YouTube channel. And uh, we normally live stream on Facebook, but I'm having a job um, getting Facebook to work on my phone this morning, so I'll come back to that. The words are the Church of England's Common Worship Daily Prayer for Tuesday during Ordinary Time, which we'll find towards the beginning of the book after prayer during the day, in the Morning and Evening Prayer during Ordinary Time section. Uh, you may also find them uh, online at Arima's Daily Prayer on the Church of England's website and downloadable apps for Apple or Android devices. Hello, good morning to you, David. Morning, Dominic. I've just done my introductory spiel. Yeah. We'll um, wait for the bells to stop. And then... Okay. They have. I've also. Um... My... I'm not able, don't seem to be able to, uh, well, not so much log in, but uh, Facebook kept cutting out. So I'm trying to log in just briefly to see if uh, I can live stream this morning on that. Otherwise, we'll just carry on. So thank you for your patience. So it just seems to be thinking about it. Let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. We move on to the song of God's righteousness. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with faithful love and compassion who satisfies you with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. <clears throat> the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, 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 as it was, in the, beginning, was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So we turn to the back of the book for the Psalter, or scroll on, the Psalms appointed this morning are numbers 48 and 52. 48 and 52. We have waited, we have waited on, on your loving kindness, O God. God. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. In the city of our God. This holy mountain is fair and lifted high, the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, the divine dwelling place, 
stands the city of the great king. In her palaces, God has shown himself to be a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled and swept forward together. They saw and were dumbfounded, dismayed, they fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in labour, as when the east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we had heard, so we have seen. In the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God, God has established her forever. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As with your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the end of the earth. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion rejoice and the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments, O Lord. Walk about Zion and go round the her. Count all her towers. Consider well her walks are through her citadels. That you may tell those who come after that such is our God for ever and ever. It is he that should be our guide for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, Son, and and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was, as it was at the beginning, beginning, is now, and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. We, we have, have waited on your loving kindness, O God. I trust in the, in the goodness, goodness of God, God forever and ever. ever. Why do you glory in evil, you tyrant, while the goodness of God endures continually? You plot destruction, you deceiver. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor. You love evil rather than good, falsehood rather than the word of truth. You love all the words that hurt, O oh, you deceitful tongue. Therefore God shall utterly bring you down. He shall take you and pluck you out of your tent and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and see this and tremble. They shall laugh you to scorn and say, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great riches and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a spreading olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. I will always give thanks to you for what you have done. I will hope in your name, for your faithful ones delight in it. I trust in glory to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and to the Holy, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the, was beginning, the beginning, is now, and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. I, I trust, trust in the goodness of God forever and, and ever. ever. And so as we scroll past our first reading to find the canticle turning back in our books to morning prayer on, in Tuesday, on Tuesday in Ordinary Time. Um, welcome to those who may be just joining us on Facebook. I've managed to um, get that to work. So sorry you missed the um, opening of our service today. The canticle, A Song of Peace, Morning Prayer, Tuesday, Ordinary Time. Spirit of God, Spirit of God teach, teach us your, your ways, ways that we, we may, may walk, walk in the paths, paths of peace. peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob. That God may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go out from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between nations, and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not live up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. <clears throat> o people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Spirit, Spirit of God, God teach, teach us your ways, ways, that we may walk in the paths 
of peace. So to my first Bible reading, Ezra 3, and I'm just opening my online um, Bible to see where Ezra falls. So it's after the Chronicles, so the, one of the final books in the history section of the Hebrew Scriptures before the wisdom material. And uh, so if you're following a book, printed book, you've turned to about halfway through and then move back towards the beginning, you might find Ezra. It's a relatively small piece of text, so you might need to look it up in the index as you flick through. But uh, that's where it is, Ezra. And then we're looking for the large number three at the head of the paragraph as we hear chapter three of Ezra. Thank you, David. When in the seventh, when the seventh month came and the Israelites were in the towns, the people gathered together in Jerusalem. Then Jeshua, son of Josedach, with his fellow priests and Zerubbabel, son of Shittel, who with his kin set out to build an altar of the an altar of the God of Israel, to offer burnt offerings on it as they prescribed, as prescribed in the law of Moses, the man of God. They set up the altar on its foundation because they were in dread of the neighboring peoples. They offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord, morning and evening. And they kept the festival of booths as prescribed and offered the daily burnt offering by the number according to the ordinance as required for each day, and after that, the regular burnt offerings, the offerings at the new moon, and all the sacred festivals of the Lord, the offerings of everyone who came, and who made a free will offering to the Lord. From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord. But the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. So they gave money to the masons and the carpenters, and food and drink and oil to the Sidonians, the Turians, to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the sea, to Joppa, according to the grant that they had from King Cyrus of Persia. In the second year after their arrival at the house of God in Jerusalem, in the second month, to Rabobol, son of Sh Shealtiel and Jeshua, son of Josedek, made a beginning together with the rest of their people, the priests and the Levites, and all who had come to Jerusalem from captivity. They appointed the Levites from twenty years old and upwards to have the oversight of the work in the house of the Lord. And Jeshua, with his sons and his king, and Cadmiel and his sons, Binui and Hodavad, along with the sons of Hanadad, the Levites, their sons and kin, together took charge of the workers in the house of God. When the builders had laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests and their vestments were stationed to praise the Lord with trumpets. And the Levites, the sons of Asher, with symbols according to the directions of King David of Israel. And they sang responsibly, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever towards Israel. And all the people responded with a great shout when the house of the Lord and shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. <clears throat> but many of the priests and Levites and heads of families, all people who had seen the first house on its foundations, wept with a loud voice, and they saw this house. And many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not distinguish the sound of the joyful shout than the sound of the people's weeping. But the people shouted so loudly, that the sound was the sound was heard far away. Thank you. We've just recently been hearing um, in one or other our morning or evening prayers <coughs> of a uh, very similar situation. Uh, Josiah, is it? As um, 
rebuilt or repaired an earlier temple after a period of uh, decline. And it marries very readily onto what we're reading here. So Josiah wasn't setting up the temple after coming out of slavery for the first time. Um, I don't think. I think he was just restoring its use. But the consequences were that they were happier, better, more fulfilled, uh, secure people as they engaged with worship. And they found God and God, or God found them and they found God. And here um, the clue is at the end of the first paragraph. Uh, all this material has been brought from the neighbouring nations according to the grant they had from King Cyrus or Cyrus of Persia. And the Persian Empire took over the Babylonian they were more successful because they kept the people in their own land, but took a tribute, whereas the Babylonians took the um, privileged into captivity and left the rest to look after, them for them, look after themselves. So evidently their economy wasn't quite as well supported as uh, the Persians. And uh, so they, their job, their way of working was to keep people in their own land. So they restored God's people from exile just because it was part of the way they worked. And uh, the writer of the Hebrew Scriptures have to work out a way of calling Cyrus Messiah because he was the person who was supposed to be saving God's people was supposed to come from amongst their own, but Cyrus was from outside. And so I forget whether it's Jeremiah or Isaiah or both spend some time, I think Jeremiah, um, explaining why it is, how it is that God is doing something totally new and calling somebody from outside a totally unexpected route to salvation. So we've got that in the middle of this story. So something totally unexpected brings hope and help to God's people, so we need to be open and ready for that today and in our lives as communities and individuals. But also the, the, the standard, straightforward, um, post-Covid, after a number of people had died and moved away, remember back what church was like, I don't know, when we were in our teens, and uh, what it is today, and we might be resentful and uh, we might be bitter, well, those people we've known and loved and see no longer, the people who are now in charge and the way things are going. And uh, we're told that whilst this church building, this temple building, was being restored and we got some of the details of the names of the people involved, so it's kind of embedded in history, like some names you find of church wardens on lead plaques in churches or on foundation stones on the Methodist chapels or churches. We've got some of the names of the people who are involved. We're told about the worship and how some were encouraged and how some were really sad. And whenever we worship, we have people whose lives are going well, people whose lives are hurt and broken, some who take great hope in the state of the church today, but who perhaps don't know how different it is in some people's experience to how it was for them back in the day. Just as some people today perhaps really pleased to see a new butterfly or the restoration of a butterfly or to see a handful of swifts. And then people might say, well, that's really good, but I remember when the sky was blackened with hundreds and thousands of them. When we see two or three starlings, people might look back and say, well, I remember when they used to be great murmurations in the sky in this very place. But let us be encouraged, and let us encourage those who need to be encouraged as we engage with restoration of our worship, not only physically, the buildings and what they stand for, but also for what the church stands for as we engage with our response to what God has done for us, that we may draw people in as we serve them and love God. To Romans 9 from 19, then our second Bible reading, we scroll onto it if we are following electronically. In a Bible with both covenants, you need to turn towards the back, and after the Gospels and Acts, you will find Romans. So two-thirds of the way in, you should find the uh, Gospel books, and then two or three in Romans. We have the large number 9, chapter 9, and the small numbers in the text, we're starting at verse 19. Romans 9 from 19. Thank you, Davis. You will say to me then, why then does he still find fault? For who can resist his will? But who indeed are you, a human being, to argue with God? Who was he <coughs> moulded? Say to the one who moulds it, Why have you made me like this? Has the potter no right over the clay to make out a mother, sorry, to make out the same lump? What make out of the same lump one object for special use and another for ordinary use? What if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power, has endured with much patience the objects of wrath that are made for destruction? And what if he has done so in order to make known the riches of his glory and the objects of mercy? which he has prepared beforehand for glory, 
including us, whom he has called, not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles, as indeed he says in Hosea, those who are not my people, I will call my people, and her who is not beloved, I will call beloved. In the very place where it was said to them, you are not my people, there shall they be called children of the living God. And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, though the number of, children, of the children of Israel were like the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will be saved. For the Lord will execute his sentence on the earth quickly and decisively. And as Isaiah predicted, if the Lord of hosts had not left survivors to us, we would have fared like Sodom and been made like Gomorrah. What then are we to say? Gentiles who did not strive for righteousness have attained, that is, righteousness through faith. But Israel, who did survive for the righteousness, is that is based on the law, did not succeed in fulfilling the law. Why not? Because they did not strive for it on the basis of faith, but as if it were based on works. They have stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written. See, I am laying in Zion a stone that will make people stumble, a rock that will make them fall, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Thank you. That was quite a tricky one. It was. I mean, it's, I don't know why it's so difficult to read, but it just doesn't seem to flow. It sort of jerks around from bit to bit. Maybe the original Greek was difficult and people writing this trying to make it as similar to that as they could. Well, I think it would help me if they would actually make it a bit easier yeah. to read. So uh, I think what's going on here is this, in its context, it's written to Gentile background believers. So generally it's metaphor and its allegory is uh, Greek or Roman influence rather than Hebrew. And it would appear that the some of the message that the writer wants to put across is to those who are grumbling and miserable because they come to faith and they don't think God is looking after them. They will have experienced persecution, no doubt. And uh, so the response here um, is... God has the right to change the shape of the pot that he is making just as a, uh, or the people he's making just as a potter has the right to change the shape of the pot that the potter is making. And uh, that is what is happening. So the things we have relied on, the, the structures, the relationships, the places we've lived, which have been safe, perhaps for us as Gentile background Christians, is now no longer. It might be the case, perhaps, for example, that we might have a, a black community that set themselves up in a place that suddenly a, an organisation has decided, an authority has decided that now it's not for blacks or Palestinians. It's been decided that it's no longer for Palestinians. And the people with their faith might have thought, well, they're established, their God will look after them. And then circumstances change. And the response here is, well, God is able to do these things because God is God. And uh, nevertheless, the first paragraph concludes with the, a quote from Hosea. I'm not sure whether it actually is. I haven't double checked it. But sometimes these things are correct and sometimes not. Those who are not my people, I will call my people. Those and her who was not beloved, I will call beloved. And so we might feel that we're excluded. We might feel that we've been messed about. But in the end, um, we will know as we look back, perhaps the reason why. But uh, God is for us. It's just these circumstances, a bit like perhaps a, a parent disciplining a child or a family going through a situation where they have to perhaps jump out of one boat and swim before they can be picked up by the lifeboat. Things may get worse before they get better. But then he goes on to talk about um, the Jewish background believers, and they're in the same predicament. Um, the Gentiles are, are being changed into better people through their experiences, and uh, the Jewish people, um, they were like the sand of the sea. But if God um, hadn't executed his sentence on the earth quickly, uh, only, a rem sorry, only a remnant will be saved. 
and the Lord will execute his sentence on the earth quickly. If the Lord had only left a few survivors, we would have been like Sodom and Gomorrah, those famously well-punished settlements, people, kingdoms in the Hebrew scriptures. So God looks after God's own people, uh, as well as those who've been grafted in um, as Gentiles. And then that sort of final paragraph uh, knits the two together. So the Gentiles only have faith because it's been given to them, and uh, the Jews, the Hebrews, only have faith because it has been given for them. But there's an element of our reaction and our response, uh, and that's the bit that we have to work through. So God's grace and covenant is given, but we have to work at it and work through it. Just as in our first reading, we heard about the, the metaphor, if you like, of the physical building being restored and improved. So our spiritual life, as we pray, as we read, as we serve together and with other people, we need to do that to maintain that relationship, just as any relationship at work or at home, uh, in a class or a lesson, requires a certain amount of duty, a certain amount of hard graft, a certain amount of celebration, and a certain amount of rest. To the responsory then, back in morning prayer on Tuesday in ordinary time. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. The Song of Zechariah. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Father, Son, Spirit, one in three, three in one, we come to you at the beginning of this day and uh, we pray that you will help us by your grace rebuild, restore the temple, ourselves as your temple as a place of worship, and that we will be open to the outsider and that we will recognise our experience as community and individuals as being but one amongst many and that uh, we ask your help and assistance to strive, recognising that in the end we must rely entirely on your grace. Amen. World Council of Churches, prayers this week for Malawi and Zambia. We are thankful for the biodiversity and natural wonders in these lands. We pray for greater food security for those most vulnerable, especially in times of climate change. Amen. From Christian Action Research and Education, O God, we pray for everyone who has been forced to flee their country because of persecution, war or violence, and the 53 million who, for similar reasons, are seeking safety within their own borders but have no protection under international law. Amen. Turn to my green Christian. Print ready PDF, scrolling through to find today's entry. And so I've got Monday the 19th. 
There we go. One in five people could live in dangerously hot conditions by the end of the century if global warming continues at its current pace. Even if nations uphold their pledges under the Paris Agreement, scientists warned in a new peer-reviewed study. Journalist Christopher Teague continues, it's the latest research published in recent days that points to the stark human and societal cost of the acceleration of climate crisis as global carbon emissions continue to rise at unprecedented levels. Well, we recognise that uh, that is the case, and we've been being warned about this since forever. We just pray that there will be a change in turn, an understanding amongst the wider public and communities of the world, that uh, we need to move on, and that those that are poorer will actually become the more poorer, and it's not um, necessarily a race for the bottom will help. But uh, we pray that people and therefore our media and our elected representatives will recognise our desire for change and that we'll be ready to make those changes in our own lifestyles to move in that direction. Amen. The fifth mark of mission for the Anglican Communion is our concern for and work for the environment and Pope Francis' prayer in that regard includes the lines, All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe. And in the smallest creatures you embrace with your tenderness, all that exists, pour out on us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live, harming no one. And in our Amen. Ben- in our benefice cycle, we pray today for our business sectors, um, private, public, and all involved in decision-making, um, that they may continue to maintain the local economy. And uh, where the people are involved in private and are uh, being paid, that they will recognise their place where people have been being paid and are now, um, or maybe uh, even whilst in a paid capacity, are able to volunteer. We thank you for them making their contribution to um, keep our community going on all its fronts and facets. We pray that you continue to build our local economy uh, such that we can care for those who aren't able to earn for themselves at the moment. Amen. We thank you for Jason, church warden here, and us on the PCC. Uh, we pray that you continue to increase and build our PCC here and others around the town. And uh, we thank you for the increasing numbers in our congregation. We pray that you bring that up to 50. That would be 10% of our 5,000 community. We thank you for the good relations we have with the other churches, uh, Roman Catholic and United Reformed in the town and for the um, community church, even though it names itself Halesworth Meeting elsewhere, we pray that you will grow people of faith, that faith may have an increasing component um, as a supporter and encourager for lives in our community across the town. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, We collect for Tuesday morning from the book Eternal God and Father, you create and redeem us by the power of your love, guide and strength, and by your spirit, we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Amen. Father in heaven, hallowed Amen. be your name. Amen. Your kingdom your come. come. Your will, your will be done, be done on, on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us give today us our daily, daily bread. bread. Forgive us our give sins, us our as we, we forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead us not, not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the kingdom the power, power, and the glory are yours, yours. Now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil. 
and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.